Hey, hey, hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be giving you two things. First, I will be giving you a buyer's guide, and second, and simultaneously, I will be showing you how I'm spending over 32,000 Golden Eagles in War Thunder during the anniversary sale. And the reason why I say buyer's guide and over 32,000, uh, and why they're not kind of the same thing is because I already have a lot of these vehicles, and I can recommend a lot of these vehicles in the buyer's guide, but of course, I cannot purchase them twice. So that said, let's get into it. So I'll be starting off with USA and working my way down the line here through Israel, be doing air, uh, aviate or army helicopters, aviation, blue water, coastal, if any of those are applicable. Uh, not every tech tree is there going to be something that I recommend in uh, naval or helicopter, or whatever the case may be. So uh, just keep that in mind. So first and foremost, so when it comes to the buyer's guide, of course, you have your very low level vehicles. I kind of like the grant, not a huge fan of it. Purchase it, if you will, if you like that uh, sort of play style, it's kind of like a mix between a TD and a regular tank but not a huge fan. When it comes to a regular vehicle, however, a uh, really good vehicle, the M4A5 Ram 2, phenomenal vehicle, excellent armor profile, excellent cannon. This thing can shoot in, uh, what was that, 5.2 seconds. Every 5.2 seconds you are getting, with its best round, over 120 millimeters of armor pen at max. So excellent vehicle, phenomenal. Recommend the M4A5 100%. The only downside to it is that it's rank two and not rank three. Now, beyond that, I would definitely recommend the T14. The M18 Black Cat is excellent. I like the Cobra King, it just doesn't fit my play style, but I would recommend that in the buyer's guide. T20 as well. Now, when it comes to what I'm going to be purchasing, I'll be getting the Super Hellcat here, so 3045 GE. It's just a really unique play style. I love the Hellcat play style. This is basically a Hellcat with a slightly more up-armored, uh, slightly larger turret, uh, up-armored turret, but of course it does weigh more, so this is 22 tons, whereas this is 17.7 tons. So it will lose some of its mobility, but it also gains a really nasty 90 millimeter cannon, plus some frontal turret armor, which the regular Hellcat really has barely any. Next, we have the T-28. I can kind of recommend that, but I'm not really a huge fan of that sort of play style. It's incredibly slow, 12.8 kilometers per hour, about half the speed of the mouse. So pretty cool if you like the idea of being a turtle, but uh, again, not so much for me. Don't really know if I could recommend the M26 T29. It is more or less kind of a gimmick, but it is what it is. The M26 E1, I do recommend. Really good vehicle, 6.7. Pretty much this is the regular M26 plus the T26 E1 E1 cannon. Just a little bit different than the E1 E1 cannon. Slightly different. So this has the T54, whereas this has the T15 E1 cannon. A little bit different, um, but you know, more or less the same exact vehicle. Now, Interestingly, you can get yourself the T114. I'm not a huge fan of it, but people love this vehicle. I do have a review for that. I'll try to link it below. But uh, in short, I do think the T114 is great. It just doesn't fit my play style. And the T54E1, pretty good vehicle. Don't really know if it's worth full price, but 4280 for an 8.0 BR premium tank rank five, meaning that you can research everything up through here without penalty. Not too bad, you know, so it's a, it's a really good vehicle. Plus it has an auto loader, five second reload. Beyond this, not really anything I could recommend in the, in the helicopters, mainly because there's nothing I can recommend. Now, when it comes to aviation, there are a lot. Recommend the KI-43-2, excellent maneuverability, much the same with the KI-61 uh, 1B or Hein or however that's pronounced. The XP55 is really good. It just costs a lot relative to what you're getting. I really love this vehicle, but I would recommend the BF109 F4 and the XP50 before I recommend the XP55, simply because these are rank three, whereas this is rank two, meaning that you'll be able to research through rank four with these, plus you can use these in events whereas the XP-55, you cannot. The BTD-1 is also really, really good. Can fully recommend that. The XA-38 is interesting because it's only a rank three or a BR 3.7, but it is rank four. So I do recommend it. Um, and it's really good when it comes to close air support because you can carry up to four 500 pound bombs with it. Plus it also has the ability uh, to have a 75 millimeter cannon with up to or over 100 millimeters of armor pen. So really, really good in that regard. Now, beyond that, I really love the FW-190 A8. Fantastic when it comes to dogfighting. Uh, interest and it is an interceptor so i believe it gets an air spawn really like it a2d1 awesome when it comes to close air support arb for base bombing awesome grinder one of the best in the game i would definitely recommend that f89b 
pretty decent. I mean, it's seen some recent uh, decreases in BR. So it is a little bit more competitive now. I think it's really good and can be functional in close air support as well. Wouldn't really get the F-89D uh, so much. It's not really as good as the F-89B, but the F-89D is still pretty viable, but it's more of a trolling vehicle. Um, now, beyond this, I'm not sure if... Um, if the F-86, F-35 is available for GE, but if it is, I would recommend it eh, if it's like one of your last things that you're gonna get. So now when it comes to Blue Water, I will be purchasing the USS Moffett. So this is a grinder and a half for SL. Definitely, uh, it's only 875 GE, but the return on SL because of its ridiculously fast cannons will be ridiculous. I mean, this is a grinder and a half for SL. So definitely go ahead and uh, pick that up. But I can't really recommend anything else because first, I don't really know anything else. I hear the USS Elena or Helena is pretty good, but again, can't really confirm it. But you can rank up or you can research through rank six or rank five rather in the American Naval Tech Tree with the Helena and uh, with the Moffett for only 875 GE during the sale, you can get through rank four. So not too shabby. Plus, again, tons of GE with that. And I wouldn't really recommend any of these uh, coastal vehicles. So let's go to Germany when it comes to Army. Now, there's not really all so much I would purchase here because I already purchased everything that I really wanted. But uh, there are some things I, I can recommend. So you can get the uh, Neuberfahrzeuge, if that's how you pronounce it, the NBFZ. Um, that's more of a meme tank. It's only rank one. Can't really say it's the best return on investment, but it's not bad. Now, the Panzer II N, very good vehicle. Awesome troll armor, especially when uh, volumetric armor came out. However, it is still rank two. Very good vehicle. It's just rank two. Can't really recommend it, but can't really not recommend it. Now, I can fully recommend the T-34 747R. Fantastic vehicle. Love it, love it, love it. It did see a recent BR increase, unfortunately, but it should still be pretty effective, although it's kind of near the edge of its effectiveness at this point. And it is only rank two. Now, a lot of people like the KW-27054R, which which is pretty much the KV-2 uh, for Germany. However, I'm not a huge fan of the KV-2. Can't really recommend or not. Uh, comment below if you have something to say about that, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Next up, we have the Panzer Bethelsbogen 4J. Again, very good vehicle. I'm not a huge fan of it so much. I'm going to spend GE on it where I have, you know, still a limited supply of GE. So I'm not going to spend what I have on this. But if I did have some extra GE, I definitely would as a collector. I think that this is a very good vehicle, but... Honestly, if you're kind of scrounging for GE, not really the, the best thing to get unless you really, really want something that's inexpensive. It's a good rank three grinder, but I would probably say the Panzer Kampf Falcon Churchill first. This is a bit better when it comes to uh, a lot of things. I would say it's a better grinder. It's got a faster reload. It's just a really good overall vehicle. The Broom Bar, it's more of a troll vehicle. I think it's pretty good, but I can't really recommend it fully. I don't believe you can get the Panzer 470A anymore, but if you can, I would recommend it. Now, the KWIC uh, 756R, this is pretty much a German KV-1 with the German 75 millimeter cannon. I really like this vehicle, but ever since it was increased from 4.7 to 5.0 OBR, uh, it's gone from being a very powerful vehicle to just being average or even slightly below average. It's not really great anymore. However, at least now you do have the VK3002M to sit in your lineup, whereas before this was, if I'm not mistaken, the only 5.0 BR German vehicle in game. So, um, you know, at least it has a friend now, but still, it's not the greatest. I could still recommend it, but it's not the greatest ever. Now, the Panzer Bethelsvagen 6P, I really like this vehicle a lot. I do have a review for that. I'll try to link it below, but excellent purchase. It's uh, pretty much just going to be a Tiger 1 with a Porsche chassis and also a really fast reverse speed. It is very slow, but um, it's not incredibly slow to the point where it's unusable, and it's got tons of armor on the front. Really, really awesome vehicle, and the great thing about it is that you can't really tell the difference between this and the VK4501P at a glance, so a lot of the time, the weaknesses that might be on the VK4501P are not here in the 6P, and thus people will shoot in the heaviest armored spots, and you'll be totally uh, you know, fine. Next up, we have the RU251, still an excellent vehicle, despite I believe it had a recent BR increase or somewhat recent. 
Awesome vehicle, great scout tank 7.0, awesome, awesome, awesome. Cannot recommend it enough. It's pretty much like a Leopard 1, but a mini Leopard 1. Next up, the Panzer, uh, the Bethelsvalken Jagdpanzer G1. This recently saw a remodeling. I like it a lot, but, um, you know, of course, this kind of falls in the same category as the Panzer Bethelsvalken 4J. Like it a lot, but not enough where I'm going to purchase it if I have other needs. But still a very good vehicle if you like the Jagdpanther. It's pretty much the same thing as the regular Jagdpanther, except premium next we have the m47g not a huge fan of it but i can't really say a lot of things about it because i don't really have any experience with it so it is what it is but uh just bear that in mind if you like the style of m46 m48 sort of uh gameplay pretty good for you but if you don't then don't get it i guess what <laughs> might be the best way to say it and then next up we have the tam 2 ip 100 recommend it this thing is amazing at 8.7 br the only real bad thing about it is that it only has night vision for the driver. So it doesn't have night vision for the gunner, and it definitely does not have thermals either. So it's a really, really good vehicle in day battles, but uh, it does suffer, again, in that it doesn't have thermals. But this does have increased armor over the regular TAM vehicles, and it also features the DM-33, which at 8.7 BR, 408 millimeters of armor pen, fantastic. Beyond this, I mean, I kind of like the MI-24 PHFS-80. However, it just doesn't really have the range that I'm looking for. Um, so it's got five kilometers maximum firing range. It has an excellent, excellent maximum speed for those missiles. But just overall firing range, it kind of keeps it difficult or makes it difficult to stay out of harm's way. So if you're a big fan of helicopters and you kind of like that as close air support, good for you. But I'm not really a huge fan of it. Now going over to aviation. Uh, as you could tell, I probably have pretty much everything that I want already. But uh, I'll go over some of the things I like. So I do like the Flagels BF-109A. I think it's a fantastic piece of history. Plus, it's incredibly cheap. So why not get it if you have a few extra GE? I think it's really cool. Uh, much the same goes for the HE-112B1U2. Pretty cheap. So why not? Now, beyond this, I mean, IL-2, again, if you like that sort of play style, it's got really good cannons for close air support. As well as bombs. However, it does have a limited loadout. And it does have German bombs rather than Russian. So German bombs tend to be a little bit better, but not necessarily a ton. Um, the BV-238, really fun vehicle, but it's more of a trolling vehicle. I can recommend it if you like to troll people, but I'm not, again, a huge fun fan of it. Um, now, beyond this, this is where it starts getting really interesting. So the P-47D-16RE, this is the new version of the P-47 that was added to War Thunder uh, over top of the old version, which I also have, which is the bubble top canopy. Fully recommend this 100%. Love, love, love this vehicle. I'm actually going to purchase this here because I love it so much. Plus, it's only 800 GE. Also, while I'm here... Okay, doesn't have any additional camouflages. That sucks. But it's yellow and green or... or um, I guess brown camo is just beautiful. So that said, I would fully recommend all three of these. Unfortunately, the A5U14 does not have a decrease in premium, but between this and the TA154, 100% recommend both these vehicles. They are both fantastic. This is a little bit better when it comes to multi-roll. However, this thing hits people with a hammer between its two 30 millimeter cannons and two 20 millimeter cannons. Excellent for intercepting bombers and heavy aircraft. Really fun plane. Love me the TA-154. Now, after this, I think the HE-219A7 is pretty decent. It's actually a really good close air support aircraft because it has fantastic cannons. Um, however, it is still really, really heavy. It's it's uh, not maneuverable. But if you like the idea of, of ground-based or of cannon-based close air support, really, really good. B, uh, do 335B2, fantastic. This is actually one of my favorite close air support planes in game because of these cannons. 77 millimeters of armor pen. I think they did see a recent decrease in armor pen, but you can also have inside of an internal bomb bay, no less. Uh, I believe it's the... Uh, what is that? The two 250 kilogram bombs plus 500 kilogram bomb. I love this plane so very much. Just absolutely fantastic. Uh, so yes, the 500 kilogram bomb does fit within the bomb bay underneath, as well as the 250 on the uh, outside on the wing. So just awesome plane, one of my favorites. And speaking of awesome planes, the JU-288C. This thing is a Silver Lion printer. Can fully recommend that as well, especially if you love yourself some Silver Lions. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now finally, when it comes to GE-based premiums, the G91R4, fantastic, love it so much. 
Now, beyond this, there's not really all so much when it comes to aviation or when it comes to blue water or coastal. Can't really speak too much about these, but I do like the M802. This is actually really good for completing challenges. It's just overall pretty good. It's got kind of a slow speed, but very powerful cannons uh, for completing coastal naval uh you know, sort of challenges for Battle Pass, this actually works out pretty good, so I can recommend that. Now, Army, when it comes to the USSR, let's get into that. Now, I do like the T3. This is pretty much just a Panzer III with the 50 millimeter long gun. Good, but again, really can't say anything fantastic about it. I like the T35, but more so as a trolling vehicle. RBT5, I don't believe you can get with GE. Um, I wouldn't really recommend the BM824, and the T126 is pretty good, but it's kind of a light tank, not the best armor, 3.0 BR, it's just kind of middling, plus the fact that it is rank 2, eh. Um, now, beyond this, I do like the Zut 37, it's pretty good, but um, ultimately, it's just one of those things where it's it tries to do two things, and it doesn't really do either of them well, so it can act as an SPAA or a tank destroyer but neither of those it's really good at. So take it as you will, but it's got a really slow turret rotation speed, which makes it poor as a uh, as an SPAA, which is what it's listed as, and also kind of mediocre as a, um, as a tank destroyer. Next up, we have the SMK. I really like it as a troll vehicle, but not really my thing. Now the T-3457, awesome vehicle, can fully recommend that, as well as the KV-1E, if that is for sale when it comes to GE. Uh, TV, which I don't believe you can, or T5 rather, I don't believe you can get that right now. Um, I would get the M4A2. It's just one of those vehicles that I really don't need, but I do recommend it. SU-100Y, it's very much a troll vehicle. It's got a ridiculously long reload, but very powerful cannon and eh, armor. But I do think that's pretty good. It's just one of those things that if you're a fan of case mated tank destroyers, so basically tank destroyers with the gun inside of an immovable, uh, without a turret, basically. If you're a fan of that, cool. If not, cool. But I do recommend it if you're a fan of that play style. Next up, we have these vehicles. And we're kind of getting into the point where a lot of these aren't even for sale anymore. Um, or they're just not available in game. So now, I, or for GE rather. So... <sighs> I kind of like the KV-122. It's pretty heavily armored, but it's got a ridiculous reload. Not a fan of that. Um, you know, it's just... It, if you're a big fan of the 122mm cannon, this is good. It's kind of like a down-armored, down b down version of the IS-2, pretty much. Um, so it's good, but not really, in my opinion. Uh, the SU-122P, pretty similar, but it's got a much better reload than the KV-122, and also sits at 2.7 BR. Pretty decent. Um, I don't really know if I can recommend the T-44-122 either, because that has a ridiculously long reload at 6.3 BR, but a much better armor profile. Now, when it comes to the T-34-100, you can actually pose a question here, because I think that this is fairly worth it, um, because its reload isn't all that bad, plus it has pretty good ballistics. The only thing it really kind of suffers in is the fact that it has very little armor, at least relative to BR, but it is still pretty quick. So I do recommend this vehicle, and actually, I'll go ahead and buy that here just to kind of show you guys how much I recommend it. So that said, I mean, beyond this, again, there's not really so much you can buy with GE. Uh, I would recommend the 2S38. However, that's not on sale. Next, when it comes to aviation, and man, this is kind of going through. I am talking a lot here, but the P40E1, I like it a lot, but, uh, you know, it's 350 GE, you really can't beat it. Same with the Hurricane Mark II B, but ultimately, eh, you know, the Mark II B is really interesting, though, because it does have two HMGs and two cannons as opposed to the eight LMGs that Hurricanes normally have. So it's a pretty cool setup. Plus, you can carry uh, RB, what is that, 82 and ROS, 22 or 82 rockets. So pretty cool, but not, not really my thing. Plus, it's 350 GE. If you have the GE and you want to spend it, you know, sure, but I can't really say one thing or another about that. I like the I-153P, very, very powerful for a biplane. Same with the I-16 Type 28. They're both very, very good. I like them a lot, but again, they're only ranked two. So as much as I would like to recommend them fully, eh, they're good, but I can't really say go ahead and buy them and spend whatever. But for cheap, they're actually not bad for getting through a decent chunk of the uh, USSR tech tree. Now, next up, we have the P47D27. I love this vehicle. This is also very interesting because it can carry 500 kilogram and 250 kilogram bombs, which is interesting because the normal one can only carry 1,500 pound bombs, which if you convert this to pounds, it's actually 
This can carry heavier bomb load uh, than the regular American one at the same VR. So it's really, really good and uh, can actually carry heavier bombs, if I'm not mistaken, with increased explosive yield. So this is a very, very effective aircraft and uh, the P-47 D-27 is just fantastic. 100% recommend. I like the P-27 J-30. Not fantastic, not great. Definitely recommend the B-47 D-27. My problem with this is that ultimately you will be shot down before you even reach the base with it. So, eh, can't really recommend it, but I can't really not. If you're a fan of level bomber gameplay, it's really good, but otherwise I would stick with this. Next up, SU-6, BE-6. I would say the SU-6 first and foremost. This thing's a little bit better overall, but the BE-6 is a good trolling vehicle. That's all I can really say about it. Um, I would 100% recommend the SU-11. This thing fights like it's 8.0 BR, just absolutely phenomenal. I love it. It's uh, one of the most overpowered vehicles in all of War Thunder. So yes, 100% would recommend that. And then finally, the M MiG-21 S. This is one I do recommend, and actually I will be purchasing right here. So awesome vehicle. I think it's a great vehicle. Really, really good. Pretty much this is a MiG-21 with, if I'm not mistaken, the MF, um, the MF's engine, but with like 9.3 BR R3 rockets. So it's pretty much got amazing performance and very little in terms of um, missiles, whereas the uh, the SPSK that you see in the German Air Tech Tree, which is a premium pack vehicle, this has the missiles, but it doesn't have the performance. So as you can see, 145 meter per second rate of climb for the SPSK and for the S, this has 160 meter per second rate of climb, but it is quite a bit better than that. Actually, it feels like this thing just kind of really gets off the ground. It's got a much, much better engine than the SPSK, but again, it suffers because it lacks countermeasures and it lacks any sort of advanced missile. So take it as you will, but this is more of a gunfighter's plane. Next, let's get into the uh, ships. I don't believe there are any ships I would purchase. I mean, the Zelesnikov, or however it's pronounced, pretty cool, don't get me wrong, but again, can't really recommend it one way or the other. Much the same goes for the Coastal Fleet. Can't say one thing or another about those. I'm not experienced enough in them, so I'm not going to try to, to lie to you one way or the other. So let's get into the, the British, and this video has been going on for quite a while now, but I'm glad that you guys are sticking with me. I'll try to put some chapters in this video, but uh, I would go for the Crusader the Saint. This is just a really fun vehicle. If you love the Crusader, which I do, definitely a really, really fun vehicle. Rank 2, cheap, definitely would purchase it. Wouldn't get the Cromwell 5 RP3. Those rockets are a pain the tush to guide. Plus, they're not really incredibly useful, especially if you miss them a lot. And it just costs way more uh, S or way more GE than, than what a Rank 2 vehicle is worth, even on sale. Just not really a big fan of it. But I would get the Sherman uh, IC Trisniak, a uh, fantastic vehicle. In fact, actually, I would purchase it if I had a need for it. I don't really have a need for it right now, but I will be getting the AC-4. This is a really interesting, unique vehicle. It's pretty much a more heavily armored, if I'm not mistaken, version of the Sherman 4, or it's got better armor, more trolley armor. It's just shaped better. Uh, just a really, really fun vehicle, and it is a little bit faster. So as you can see, it does have a better power to weight ratio and a still very powerful cannon. So awesome vehicle. I'm going to get it actually for myself right now because this is something I've been wanting for a long time. Okay. But beyond that, I mean, I do really like the Centurion Action X. Fantastic fantastic vehicle. Um, I think I even have a review on it and I'll try to link that below, but I do really like this vehicle. It's just overall a good Centurion. Uh, it's got really interesting turret armor because it doesn't have a traditional turret, as you could see, rather than a an entire turret, um, whatever they call it, like a mount or whatever. This just kind of moves up and down in a fixed turret. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, of course the turret is fully traversable, but um, you can see what I mean. Now, helicopters, don't really know if I can recommend the G-Lynx. It just doesn't really have as good of uh, armament as I would want. Uh, it's still really, actually, my apologies. I do recommend this. I was confusing this with the uh, Tiger, but the G-Lynx, very good. Not a huge fan of the Tiger, I meant to say, but, um, you know, personally, I would just get the Ruval, even though it is 10.7, but at 3,930 GE, you know, especially if you want to have the Challenger DS in your lineup, very, very good. Now, when it comes to air power, Let's get into this. So again, I mean, low BR vehicles, there's not really so much I can recommend or not recommend. They're all really cheap, but they also don't really get you anywhere in the tech tree. 
I really like the Spitfire Mark II Avenger 1. I think it's fantastic. It's a really fun vehicle. Got a ton of ammunition coming out from LMGs. Just really, really fun. Uh, you know, you have to spend hundreds of rounds just to be able to knock one plane out of the sky, but I think it's just a really fun vehicle. Uh, so, you know, I do like it, but again, there's only so much you can do with it. You can grind through rank three, but rank three only goes through like four 4.7 BR, depending on where you're going. Um, you know, beyond this, I like the Corsair Mark II, but much the same thing. You know, it's pretty much just a low BR aircraft. Can't really do too much with it. Now, when it comes to higher BR aircraft or higher rank aircraft, I love the Thunderbolt Mark I. This is one of my favorite planes in War Thunder. It's just phenomenal. Uh, this is pretty much just a P-47, but for the English, 4.0 BR, it's a Razorback model. And it is great when it comes to close air support. You can use this in much higher BRs than with other uh, aircraft, so just really, really phenomenal. And like I said before, actually, this just kind of lends credence to it. This is a 1,000 pound bomb, it has slightly less TNT equivalent compared to the Russian. Uh, one or 500 kilogram bomb. So just bear that in mind. But again, fantastic. Hellcat Mark II, really, really good. It's pretty much just a down BR uh, version of the Thunderbolt Mark I with lesser capability. So you can have two 1,000 pound bombs and six HVARs. Personally, I prefer the two 1,000 pound bombs plus a 500 pound bomb. That's just me. But the Thunderbolt Mark I is a much better aircraft than the Hellcat. But again, you do have the corresponding increase in BR. Now, this is really good. The Mustang Mark IA does have the Hispano cannons, but those things jam up like crazy. Thankfully, you do have the Mark II year 1943 uh, automatically unlocked with them, but really, this is just going to be a really good dogfighter, and that's pretty much it. Plus, it's only 3.3 VR, but it is rank 3, so take it as you will. I like it, but again, this is kind of in the same category as a Bethelsvagen Panzer 4J, where you can purchase it. In my opinion, it's not really worth purchasing unless, of course, you were going to... Um, you know, uh, unless it was kind of like one of those things, you just had some extra GE left over, and this was like on your tertiary wish list. Now, beyond this, there's a lot of really good or pretty good rank four aircraft, but not really anything that I would purchase, to be honest with you. The Hornet Mark One, it's good, but doesn't really differentiate itself too much from the Hornet Mark Three. Not really all too much of a difference there. Um, now, I wouldn't really get the Spitfire uh, Mark. Was that like 14C? Not my thing. Uh, I like the Spitfire a lot, but again, doesn't really differentiate itself enough from a lot of other Spitfires. Not so much my thing, but really, really good. I mean, all these are very good. Then you have the Attacker FB2. Again, pretty much the same thing as the Attacker FB1. Very good vehicle, rank five, can recommend. But beyond this, I would fully recommend the Steve Vixen FAW Mark II. Fantastic vehicle for Mark V. One of my favorites at Mark V. Just awesome, awesome vehicle. Fully recommend that. And then finally, when it comes to GE-based aircraft, Harrier GR1, 100% recommend that. I love it, love it, love it. It is not as good as it was when it was first released at 9.3 BR, but still very, very good. And it has those S Rams that you cannot beat. Just awesome, awesome, awesome plane. I love it so very much. Now, beyond this, there are some other vehicles. I mean, not really anything I can fully recommend in the naval tech trees, just because, again, honestly, I'm not really huge into naval, and I can't really say one thing or another about them. I would imagine the Belfast is good. If you guys know about the Belfast, comment in the comments below to help other people out, but not so much my thing. Same with Coastal. Now, let's go over to the Japanese. Now, the Japanese have the Rogo. This thing is one of the worst, if not the worst, tank in-game. Absolutely terrible. Look at that. 200 meter per second out of its 70 millimeter cannon, and out of its 37 millimeter cannon, 575 mil, uh, meters per second. Which means that between, if you want to shoot both of those cannons, you have to aim substantially different between each one of them. So this one, you can aim a little bit more on a flat trajectory, whereas this is more of a howitzer. Um, so you always have to constantly adjust your aim. Just terrible. Not a big fan of it, but it is a meme vehicle. So I guess there's that. Chiha short gun. Again, pretty similar in that regard. It's just got a very low velocity uh, HE shell, but it is rank two, only 500 GE. Not bad, not great. I love the Chinu too, but it did see a BR increase somewhat recently, but still absolutely phenomenal. Love that vehicle, fully recommend it. Uh, it's pretty close to like a Japanese Sherman in a way. Uh, it's kind of like a down, I guess, a lesser armored Sherman with the 76 millimeter cannon, if that makes any sense. Then we have the Hori prototype. I'm actually going to purchase this. I like the Hori prototype a lot. It's pretty much the Hori 
production, but with lesser armor. Uh, so it does weigh quite a bit less, about 14 tons less, but I also believe it has a corresponding decrease in engine power. So it is what it is, but it is still very, very powerful. It's got a phenomenal cannon, really, really good. So I am going to purchase that now. And let's just see if it has any special skins. Nothing really all too special, but a really cool design, just uh, kind of like a, a Japanese Ferdinand in a way. So next up, we have helicopters. I'm not a huge fan of a, of a lot of these. I kind of want to get the Kisarazu, but I can recommend it if you're into helicopters. But this has a really low firing range, 3.75 kilometers. Not my play style. But uh, of course, it does have the very meme -y sort of standard skin. Like this is the stock skin. So I think it's, it's not bad if you like helicopters. But again, that's not really my thing. Now, when it comes to aircraft, I like the A7HE1 mainly because of its historical value, but it is still really good. KI-44, I-34, really, really good vehicle. I mean, all of these are really, really good. I'm actually going to be getting this because of its historical value and because I love BF-109s. Really nothing more, <laughs> nothing less. KI-100, phenomenal vehicle. Uh, it's got very, very powerful armament for its BR 3.7. But this is, again, like these other ones, only rank two. Now going into rank three, the more impressive vehicles, definitely get the FW-190A5. Love that. KI-96, can't really say one thing or another about it. It's got very limited ammo with its 37 millimeter cannon. Um, but I will likely... Get, actually, I will be purchasing the A7M1. Here, it just looks really cool. Plus, I mean, just look at that. It's got the orange camouflage, phenomenal turn time, excellent firepower. It's got HMGs. Uh, it's got 20 millimeter cannons with 400 rounds total. Phenomenal. 100% want to get that. It is ranked three, but for only 1,095 GE at 5.0 BR, very, very good. Now, beyond this, this is only given out during the, if I'm not mistaken, the Pacific campaign. So if you purchase the Pacific campaign, you can get this, uh, but you can get the J2M5 Raiden. Love this. Really, really powerful. It does only have 84 rounds. So it's pretty much you go up into the sky, you kill your enemies, and then you just fly right back. You have to be really, really careful with the ammunition on it, but it is still really good. Plus, it is a rank 4 aircraft, which means that you can rank research all through rank 5 with it. So again, very, very good. Now, let's just get a little bit further here. I do really like the KI-87. I actually believe I have a gameplay on this. This is one of my favorite aircraft in games, at least for props. It's just, again phenomenal in that regard plus it has instead of just the 84 rounds this has 300 rounds of 30 millimeter ammunition and as you can see about eight kilograms per second of burst mass with tons of ammunition really really good this is pretty much like if the japanese decided to go with firepower over maneuverability that's what this is it's kind of like a flip on the typical japanese doctrine phenomenal i love it it's a really, really good aircraft, would fully recommend it. And then when it comes to the F-86, F-40, I do like it a lot for a 9.0 BR aircraft. In fact, actually, even though I do have the T-2 early, I do still get the hankering to play this aircraft. Um, but it's not really the greatest unless you're a big fan of gunfighters. So I like it a lot. I actually have a review on that. I'll try to link it below. But um, it is a really good aircraft. It's just not really for everybody. Next, we have the Blue Water Fleet. And I've only got 8,280 GE left. So 100% want to get the Makuma. This thing is fantastic when it comes to uh, completing events and, and challenges and all that. Because it has so many torpedoes. It's got 24 of the best torpedoes in all of War Thunder. As you can see, 627 kilograms of explosive filler equivalent with a 20 kilometer range you put those bad boys in 8b and you will be set it is just a great great uh ship when it comes to completing challenges love it so much um you know this and the shimikaze will wreck absolutely wreck when it comes to uh naval challenges just and besides like look at that skin look at that camouflage just looks beautiful love this thing it's not really the the heaviest armored or armed but it again those torpedoes in AB, phenomenal. Cannot say enough good things. And then finally, and if you couldn't tell, I've been purchasing a lot of Japanese ships uh, and just vehicles in general. PGO2, this thing has a 20 millimeter rotary cannon, the JM61. This is pretty much the same rotary cannon that they have on the Starfighter. <laughs> so, so it's just a really, really powerful cannon. Um, I like it a lot. 
you know it's uh and it has apf or apds shells on it so let me just see here 64 millimeters of armor pen and it can fire at what's that firing rate so fire at 20 sec well it doesn't really say the firing rate on this but let's just say it's it's really really high because of course what you get on the um in the jm 61 a1 that's on the starfighter incredibly fast just really really good especially for completing uh naval tasks so i'm going to be getting this as well but that's pretty much it when it comes to them now let's go over to china and there's not really all so much i can recommend uh mainly because there's not really all so much left here but we have the ztz 99 or 59a i do like this a lot i think it's really good um i can't really recommend or not recommend it it's just really it's a pretty good vehicle at this br but it's stabilizer if i'm not mistaken stops working beyond 45 kilometers per hour and you will reach that pretty quickly so it is what it is um it's pretty good but not phenomenal it's kind of like a downgraded t55a in a way but actually, no, in a way, it's kind of better, but not really. It's like a weird mix of a T-54 and a T-55A. So I like it a lot, um, but not enough where I'm going to purchase it. But I do have a review on that. WMA-301, 100% recommend purchasing it. Phenomenal. One of the best light tanks in game. It's got Gen 2 thermals at 8.3 BR. It's got Tandem Charge ATGM at 8.3 BR. APFSDS at 8.3 BR. Just awesome. I mean, I don't know why this is not a higher BR. It's just phenomenal. Um, definitely 100% recommend that. Now, when it comes to the Chinese Air, not really so much I can recommend, but there's not really so much I can't recommend. Um, I do really like the A6M2, the KI-84, but again, these are pretty much copy-paste vehicles. If you like them in the Japanese tech tree, go ahead. Um, I would say get the Shenyang F5. My only issue with that is that the A5C is so much better, and I would recommend waiting for sales to get this once the packs come out rather than spending your GE on the Shenyang F5. If you really like a gunfighter, go ahead. But the A5C is just so much better. This is one of the best aircraft in all of War Thunder. Phenomenal. Love it so much. Definitely recommend this. But Shenyang F5, eh, it's good. Just more of a gunfighter aircraft. Now going to Italy. Now there's a few ship or a few uh, tanks I would recommend. If you can still get the Soleri Sahariano, I like it a lot. It's pretty much an Italian Crusader really good same with the m4 hybrid very very good this has i believe it's a uh different versions of the m4 um like a1 and like a2 maybe it is but um let's see here if you can see so as you could see like at the front it's kind of i think it's here like where it's welded you have an older m4 and then you have a newer m4 kind of in the back which is where i believe it gets its hybrid designation but very very good but it's pretty much just functions like a regular m4 i like it a lot much the same goes with the panzer 4g pretty good but you know, if, if you like Panzer IVs, good. You know, I would probably say that this is a better purchase for your GE than the M4 Hybrid simply because it's rank three over rank two. But, you know, this is pretty much the same thing. Almost everything here is going to be copy paste so the m26 dc Ariat, i love it but again copy paste if you like m26s go ahead get it but really i just see it more as a filler for the tech tree it's not really anything that that's really necessary uh, but it is going to be good for grinding through rank five very good vehicle but again it's just an m26 much the same goes with the m60 a1 this is very very good but again it's just an m60 Nothing really special about it, but it does have night vision. Now, beyond this, the OF-40 MTCA. I love this thing so much. It's got phenomenal zoom uh, when it comes to its gunner sights. As you could see, it's got, what is it? 15.9 times zoom, which is phenomenal when it comes to this tank. One of my favorite tanks in War Thunder. Uh, it's just really good BR. It's got very powerful cannon dm23 it's just really really good the only thing bad about it is that it has very little armor but it's phenomenal when it comes to speed acceleration mobility um it's got a pretty good cannon not the best but pretty good and again that excellent excellent zoom this thing is just a really good sniper and flanker i recommend it a lot but you know i guess to each their own now beyond this for aviation we're kind of getting into a little bit of a uh, whittled down air tech tree here but g55s i like it a lot very powerful armament and it also has the ability to carry torpedo so if you do like naval go ahead and get that bf109 g2 really like it a lot again same sort of pre uh, premise it's a copy paste aircraft but it is very very powerful uh so if you like the bf 109s especially the g series awesome vehicle but that's really all i could say about it but these are both rank four so you can get yourself through rank 
5, which is nice. Next up, we have the G91R4. I do have a review on this. What a phenomenal aircraft, just overall very, very good. It's got excellent close air support options. You have yourself the ability to carry up to four AIM-9Bs, which at 8.7 BR is really, really nice, plus four HMGs. Again, awesome. You can get yourself A-20 Nords, uh, the ATGMs, which are just really, really powerful versus ground vehicles. Not as good as they used to be, but still very, very good. So, And you could also get the AA-20 Nords, and these are air-to-air -air missiles. So all of these options are very, very good. It's just a very good overall 8.7 BR aircraft. Can work for close air support, air RB, you name it. It's just really, really good. Plus, it has a really cool skin if you purchase it. I believe the German version has the same exact skin, though. Uh, um, and then you have the Ariate. I'm not really sure if you can get this right now on sale, but if you can, if you're a gunfighter, 100% one of the best gunfighters in War Thunder. It's actually dual engined, as you can see. You have an engine here and you have an engine here. And the great thing is that the more powerful engines up front, so if you have somebody trying to shoot you out from behind and they hit this, you still have about two thirds of your engine power left right here up front. So it's a really, really nice aircraft, awesome maneuverability, very good performance overall. It's just very, very smooth. Next up, we have the uh, coastal tech tree or the blue water in the coastal. Um, you know, there's not really so much I can say about blue water. I do think the RN Pola is probably pretty good, but again, Again, can't really say one way or the other. It's got very powerful cannons, eight 203 millimeter cannons at 5.7 BR, and it's a heavy cruiser, so it's really nice in that regard, but again, can't speak to it. Next up, we have the Sparviero. I like this a lot, pretty much along the same lines as the PO2 or the PG2, whatever it is for the, uh, for the Japanese. Again, this is actually one that I will be purchasing, so again, Really, really nice purchase here. Auto cannon, very powerful, very, very good for completing lower BR uh, naval tasks. Plus it's rank four, so you can get yourself all the way through rank five in coastal. Not really so much left that we have to go over here, but of course we have the French, 100% recommend the B1 Terror. Like that a lot, AMX 13, M24, like it a lot, awesome. M4A1, FL10, that's really good. It's pretty much the um, the SA50, except it has an auto loader. So it's really, really powerful in that regard, but um, you know, that's really all that could be said about it. It does have lesser turret armor, as well and uh, I believe it is slightly lighter yes it is slightly lighter than the SA-50 that's pretty much it love the Panther Dauphine think it's great I would definitely recommend that awesome vehicle uh, but then again I personally uh, would recommend every Panther tank and then finally I would recommend the AMX-50, or AMX-30 rather awesome uh, really nice vehicle to have in my opinion just uh, very Powerful 7.7 BR, good overall vehicle. Uh, it's kind of similar to the M60 in a way, but uh, of course French, and it does have heat. So the problem with heat is that if you hit any sort of obstacle before it actually hits the enemy, then you will have a problem. Now, one vehicle I cannot recommend is the e, uh, EC665 Tiger HAP. Not really great. This is kind of in the same vein as the Kisarazu. This only has a 4.3 kilometer firing range. If you're comfortable with getting that close go ahead and do it but not really all that great it does have mistrals which are nice but eh, again not a huge fan of it although it does look really really cool next up we have sweden so we have the army now i would recommend the stridsvagen m41 si first before i get the t26 this is pretty much the vickers mark e except with a different cannon but it's pretty much the same exact vehicle again just slightly different um but the Stridsvagen M41 SI, definitely recommend that over the T26, mainly because it's ranked two and it is cheaper as of right now. Um, but there's not really all too many premiums when it comes to GE for them. The Stridsvagen 81 is pretty much a Centurion, I believe was that, like the Mark IV or V, but it's got the RB52 ATGMs on them. Very cool. Not really all too important for me. I'm not a huge fan of ATGM gameplay, but pretty much if you guys like Centurions, kind of slow, pretty good armor pen, uh, decent armor, this is going to be for you. Next, we have the Stridsvagen 1030. I believe you can purchase this still. Pretty much, this is the wedge tank. Very famous um, and very, once you get the controls down along with how to control the suspension, you can use this thing in a hold down very, very well and shells with tons of armor pen will just bounce right off of you. I've seen people not take any damage after getting hit probably dozens of times with it. So it's very, very good. Next, we have helicopters. I like the mi 28A. It's pretty powerful. It's got good uh, ATGMs, six kilometer range, 550 
uh, meter per second uh, sort of uh, maximum speed, good armor pen, pretty good. And for the lack of, I'd say, close air support that the that the Swedish have, it's actually pretty good. But again, it is what it is. Uh, beyond this, I mean, I like the Apurim ski, very good, but not really something I can recommend or not recommend. It's just good. Uh, I would recommend the Saab 1050 or 105OE. Awesome. You see this all the time. It's a strike aircraft. This thing just wipes bombers out at this BR. You can equip it with two 30 millimeter cannons plus two basically aim 9b is just really really good at 8.3 vr and actually if i had the ge which i'll probably go buy some ge in a second i would go ahead and buy this and then finally when it comes to israel it's not really all so much this is a very undeveloped tech tree the Paten, pretty good um you know again if you really like high vr sort of gameplay it's got some of the best missiles in war thunder atgms eight kilometer firing range 475 meter per second firing speed really really good when it comes to uh, armor pen so it's an excellent plane or a uh, helicopter rather but again i'm not really a huge fan of helicopters but i do recommend it if you're into that thing and then finally we have the tanks I would recommend the Magok 3 ERA. It does have attachable ERA. So when you go into preview, it won't show the ERA here, but it is a modification. And this will add, I believe, what is it? Like about one ton of ERA, which is really, really nice right around here on the turret. So these are the connection spots there. So it does add a nice amount of ERA, which should help to stop some lower powered heat FS. So it's very, very good. And then you have the Shulk Caldelet, which is pretty much a, uh, a different cannoned version of a Centurion more advanced. So that said, I spoke a lot here. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the dealio. I went on for way longer than I expected, but I do appreciate if you guys stuck around and uh, viewed this to the very end. But if not, who cares? You know what? You guys decided to click on the video, and that, that really means the world to me. Either way, though, thanks again. I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.